Hello again, I'm Joel Bartholomew. During the past few months, these video blogs have focused on connected health. What I haven't done is talk about best practices. The American Telemedicine Association is a great resource and recently published Core Guidelines for Telemedicine Operations, developed by a committee of practitioners and educators. These guidelines provide a sound roadmap for effective and safe medical care at a distance. The guidelines are for individual providers, group and specialty practices, hospitals, clinics, and healthcare systems. Obviously, you shouldn't expect to operate any patient program without systematic controls and processes in place. And knowing the relevant state and federal law regarding telemedicine is essential because there are a lot of things involved, among them accreditation, informed consent, and protection of patient health information. Some patients may still prefer in-person care, and according to the guidelines, physicians should honor and respect their request. Those patients who agree to be seen telemedically do need some understanding, however, of the technology and how it works. Patients may be familiar with video conferencing, but the store and forward concept of medical images and the basics of technical issues like encryption protection should be explained to them. Some states permit physicians to establish the doctor-patient relationship using electronic means. Most, however, still require an in-person examination by a doctor plus the taking of a complete medical history in order to set up the relationship. Why is this important? The background information along with the examination factors into the doctor's diagnoses. The medical history must include medications the patient is already taking, any allergies to medications, and where the patient is receiving other medical services. Whenever a physician sees a patient, the session must be documented in the patient's medical record. And providers should have the contact information for a family member or patient support person who would be called in the case of an emergency. Health professionals will likely need special training so they are familiar with the medical devices and software used at the patient end before providing any patient services. Connected Health requires sufficient internet bandwidth for synchronized video and audio. For most applications, simple broadband works best. When acquiring, storing, and forwarding patient medical images, Physicians need to make sure they use encryption technologies that meet the recognized standards. The last couple of years, Congress has added some enforcement teeth to the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, or HIPAA. Like other patient medical information, images must be protected to preserve confidentiality and privacy. Providers are expected to store the data images, and session logs securely so that only authorized users have access. These are just the highlights. There is a lot to know and that's why we believe training is essential for all practitioners who will be involved with a telemedicine or connected health program. You can find these guidelines on the American Telemedicine Association's website. We have a link on this page here, right below. I'm Joel Bartholomew. If you would like more information, let me know. You'll find my email address on this page as well. Thank you.